only time I've been on a farm is with my primary school. I don't think I know the countryside very well. I haven't actually, well, not been, been to any, like any farms. It's the first time I've ever touched their uh, farm animals, pretty much. Year eight from St Bartholomew's, a comprehensive in Newbury, get the chance to visit a farm for a day. The farm welcomes half the year group. That's 125 pupils at a time. Despite growing up in a rural town, for many it's a rare opportunity for a hands-on experience of the countryside. Living in Newbury is quite a, a town in a rural area, um, but because it is a town, they are uh, very often focused when they go home on indoor activities, playing on the computer and things like that. So they don't have a huge awareness of the countryside and agriculture. Wow! A recent study revealed that 20% of children in England have never been to the country. Even children brought up in towns within the countryside can easily grow up having no contact with the land at all and little understanding of farming. We have to weed mechanically. What machine do you think out your this does that? Today's youngsters are more likely to have holidayed abroad than to have explored Britain's fields and farms. Wow, I'm not surprised to learn at all that one in five uh, only one in five children ever get out to the countryside nowadays. But I think, you know, life's centred much more around the computer now and the PlayStation and the television. Would you like to go and have a look at the combine harvester then? Yeah. yeah. While we're there, I'll tell you a bit about how it works, all right? <laughs> it's very obvious from the children that come here. There's no concept of the countryside at all, no concept of where their food comes from, the environment, what farmers do, that they're producing food. It's just totally alien to them. I don't really think of where my food comes from because my mum usually just buys it from the supermarket. Anyone know that on this? Wheat. Nope. Wheat. Nope. Barley. Oats. oats. Yeah, oats. these ones are oats. I think um, coming to a farm, it's quite like interesting to see actually where it does come from. Would you like to go out and have a look in the cab? Yeah. If you line up, we'll get you up three at a time, yeah? Even children from rural towns and villages don't have an understanding, really, of what goes on in the countryside. They pass through it, but they don't see the process going on. And so it's vital that those children uh, get an understanding uh, that the cows in the field are being milked twice a day and produce milk, or that the sheep are producing lambs. And so the whole process is not just confined to those in the city who, who sometimes won't have seen anything, but is, is a, a, a across all types of children. Before we had combine harvesters, you'd have to get out there, you'd have to cut it all by hand. Okay? If you look at them pictures over there, you can see people doing that. And if you look at the end of those, third picture down on the left, black and white one, if you go out and have a look, you'll see there's some small people, their children, they're bringing in the harvest. That's why you got six weeks holiday. It wasn't a holiday. It was child labour. <coughs> to be honest, you wouldn't get paid, no, because you'd be living out in the country, you'd be living on a farm, and you were bringing in your food, so the last thing you'd expect is to be paid for it, yeah? Rushall Farm in Berkshire food. is an organic farm and is well set up for hosting school visits. This farm in particular is, is quite a good place to visit uh, because we have a large educational team. We've, we've been doing it for 20-something years, uh, so it's, it's very much part of the ethos of what we do. But in addition, it, it's an organic farm, and organic farms by their nature have to be mixed farms. They have to have livestock because the livestock provide the manure for the crops, and the crops feed the animals, and it's a whole cycle the entire time. And it's fixed. It was smooth. It's like a brush. <laughs> it does, actually. Oh my so whereas some other farms may concentrate on cereal crops or a large dairy unit, which are all great things to see, the variety isn't there. If you come here, you've got a, you know, you've got a whole package really for the day. This lady's a, a sheep. Okay, once a year we shear her. Why? So she doesn't get too hot. So she doesn't get too hot. That's one of the main reasons. Well done. Why else do we shear her? Yeah. For the wool. Yeah, we sell it. We make a little bit of money out of it. Okay, not a lot. Probably a pound the sheep. Does it hurt the sheep? No, it doesn't hurt them at all. Uh, they don't like it particularly because it only happens once a year, so they're not very used to it. But, you know, in terms of animal welfare, you're keeping them nice and clean, which stops things like flies laying eggs on them, and you're keeping them cool. 
I mean, it, it wouldn't be very fair to you, would it, if, if you had to walk around in a big overcoat all summer long? You take it off. Same with the sheep. To stop them wriggling, I hold them with my knees like so, OK? Because one hand has got to spread their skin so I don't cut them, and the other one has to cut them. I haven't actually got the crippers on at the moment. I'd start on the front leg, move down to a back leg. This is one of about a 1,000 farms nationally that are involved in the Year of Food and Farming, a campaign that's aiming to help reconnect children with the countryside and all that goes on there. This is how the honey comes from the bees. Um, they, they bring the, the nectar back, refine it down, take the water out, and they, it's, you could almost call it bee sick because they actually regurgitate it. They pass it around the hive. Yeah, I, perhaps I shouldn't have told you that just now. <laughs> perhaps that should have come afterwards. But you can see here how they've stored it all away and it's just dripping out. And this, to get the honey, we slice the top off and then spin it out. And then we can get it into jars. So is the honey inside the honeycomb? Yes, and the honeycomb is wax, which is edible, so you can actually eat all of it. Right. But if you want, you can either have the honeycomb or you can have it from the jar. <laughs> the idea of the campaign is to get young people thinking about food and the choices we make when we buy, and how that has a direct effect on the future of the countryside. Is this healthy? Yes. Natural. Oh, I'm gonna Unprocessed. Live I hope it will bring the, the understanding of children about the farming industry and how their food is produced, how their milk is produced and how it gets to them. And they will be able to be more informed as they, they grow up in making sensible decisions about what sort of uh, products they're going to buy and where those products come from and how healthy they are, how wholesome they are and so on. Do you eat the stuff from this farm? I, like yes, I, I, I do. I've actually got a freezer full of pig at the moment. The thing is, they have a good life while they're here. The welfare's really good. The way we look after them's really good. But they, yeah, they, they are here to become your, your, your food. I think they get a lot out of this trip because a lot of them haven't had the experience before of being on a farm um, and realising really where their food comes from and understanding organic farming, etc. So I think it's been, it's really worthwhile. That's beef, organic beef, Marks and Spencers. That's lamb, organic lamb, Tesco's. At the moment we're supplying Mark Spencer's with beef, Tesco's with lamb. But that does change year on. That calf there will become beef burgers at some point. He's going to become Mark Spencer's beef because he's a bull calf. So we can't keep him. If it was a female, we might keep her for the breeding stock, but it's a bull calf. I don't know where it comes from. I just uh, eat meat and I don't, I don't know where those um, meat come from. It was quite shocking really because you think that you've gone to Tesco's, you've bought this mint, and you, you could have seen it alive. And it's sort of quite sad, but it's quite interesting that it's local and that, well, it's come from a farm that you've been to. I think the way that meat is produced, it's a bit mean, but you have to eat meat because it's good for your bones and everything. So I think so long as the animals have a good life till they're slaughtered, and that's sort of OK. Yeah. When I get meat again on my plate, I won't. I'll try not to think about it, just think of it as food. I just think of it as food rather than animals, really. Russell Farm is organic, but the message to the visitors is they have to make up their own minds about what kind of food they want to eat. Carrots, both organic and non-organic, are given a taste test. It's not to say to you, you should only go out and buy organic food, because we just tried organic carrots, and you, most of you preferred the non-organic one, didn't you? And I have to say, I couldn't even taste the difference, so there you go. A lot of people seem to try organic vegetables, not so much other things. OK. Uh, I eat quite a lot of organic vegetables, because normally I can tell the difference, and I think I can with the meat. What about the look of organic vegetables? Do you want them straight? Does it matter if they've got a bend in it? What if they're a bit airy? Covered in dirt? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Who'd actually be more attracted to it if it was covered in dirt? Yeah. <laughs> Why? Looks natural. Looks natural, doesn't it? Yeah. So it's funny, isn't it? Some people say, oh, well, we want all the carrots to look absolutely identical. 
Uh, and that's what the supermarkets say that everybody wants. You like the idea, if it's a bit dirty and grubby, it gives you the idea it's more natural, doesn't it? So that can work both ways, can't it? This is my third visit on this trip, my third year, and, um, and we'll definitely run it again see next year and in the future because it's very valuable for the children to develop their understanding and their knowledge about farming, about organic food, um, and about where their food comes from, I suppose, in general, really. What's the problem with organic food, guys? Big problem. More expensive. It's more expensive, isn't it? Now, it all depends on what you get. I haven't got any milk here today, but organic milk actually isn't much more expensive than ordinary stuff now. And it seems, like I say, that it's good for you guys, for your sort of growing minds. It helps you make connections in the brain. So that's one good one. The pupils are encouraged to consider why there's a growing market for organic food and the reasons why consumers are charged more for organic products. What comes out of the combine, obviously, is this stuff. This is actually wheat, yeah? Okay. Now, for a set area, maybe an acre, that's what you'd get if it was non-organic. That's what you'd get if it was organic. You don't get as much for a given area, and that just basically makes it more expensive. We get maybe a half, two-thirds of the amount, 60%, something like that. Visiting a farm is good because you see how your food is grown and if anything is done to it to make it grow. It's made me think about it more. I don't usually think about where my food comes from. I think tri a hands-on trip like this, who can forget it really? They've been doing all sorts today. They've been obviously touching the animals, the sheep uh, and the chickens. Some of them have tasted organic food before, but some hadn't. So to them, I think it was quite a new, new experience really, tasting the carrots and deciding which one was organic, which was non-organic. It will be very memorable for them and they'll remember it definitely. And obviously photographs that we've taken as well will help as well. Let him come back. Oh my God. I like going in the sheep field and herding the sheep. I've learnt that the sheep uh, were bred here and then taken away to slaughter. I like stroking the animals and feeding them. I like learning about the combine harvester and the seasons. I've learned that like organic food um, they don't use like chemicals on the fields and stuff, and they give their animals more space. There are farms out there, there are organisations dedicated to get kids out to those farms, and they're countrywide. The organic ones are on the Soil Association website. Uh, Access to Farms is another website which will, will tell you about farms in your area that you can go and visit. And farmers aren't these scary teachers people think. You can phone them up and say, can I bring a group of school children? They want children to know where their food are coming from. They want children to be in touch with farming. You know, most of them will say yes, I'm sure. So there's much more than just us out there. There's a lot of farms doing this sort of work.